In this video we will deal with Planck's law of blackbody radiation, which describes the radiated wavelength spectrum as a function of temperature. We will derive the Stefan Boltzmann law from this law to determine the total radiated intensity of a blackbody based on temperature. We will also derive Wien's displacement law, which describes the shift of the maximum of the spectral intensity as a function of temperature. So let's get started. Planck's law of blackbody radiation. The emitted wavelength spectrum of a blackbody could not be explained for a long time. Until then, it was assumed that energy would be distributed continuously. It was only by introducing discrete energy levels that the physicist Max Planck succeeded in describing blackbody radiation mathematically. Although he did not know how to interpret the introduction of discrete energy levels physically at first, he laid the foundation for quantum mechanics. Planck could derive the following formula for the distribution of the spectral intensity as a function of wavelength. This formula is also known as Planck's law. Intensity means the radiant power of the black body emitted per unit area. In the physical sense, this means a surface power density. If, as in this case, the intensity is related to the wavelength interval within which the power is emitted, this is called spectral intensity. If the spectral intensity is plotted over the wavelength, then in such a diagram the area under the curve corresponds to the emitted intensity in the wavelength range under consideration. There is a clear relationship between the wavelength of a radiation and its frequency. This relationship results from the speed of propagation of the radiation, which in this case corresponds to the speed of light. Therefore the spectral distribution of the intensity can also be expressed as a function of frequency, the diagram shows the spectral distribution for different temperatures. In this case, the spectral intensity refers to the radiated intensity per unit frequency. Thus, the intensity is related to the frequency. The area under the curve therefore represents the radiated intensity within the considered frequency interval. In order to determine the total radiated intensity of a black body at a certain temperature, the total area under the curve must be determined. Mathematically, this means that the Planck function must be integrated over all radiated frequencies from zero to infinity. This then finally leads us to the so-called Stefan Boltzmann law. In the following, we carry out this integration in detail. Derivation of the Stefan Boltzmann law. We integrate Planck's law using the frequency form. In principle, one could also integrate the wavelength form of Planck's law over all wavelengths. However, this would ultimately lead to the same result. The red mark term in equation 2 contains only constants and can therefore be written before the integral. The integral itself can be solved by replacing the red marked argument of the exponential function by a new variable x. This procedure is called integration by substitution. According to the given definition of the introduced variable x, we can now solve this equation for the frequency we still need a connection between the differential df and dx. This relation is obtained by deriving the given definition x with respect to the variable f. This equation provides the relation between df and dx. We can now put these derived relationships into equation 3 and finally obtain equation 4. We can simplify this equation a little bit with the help of the law of exponents. Let's have a closer look at equation 5. Again we get constant quantities, which can be written before the integral. We can now summarize these quantities with the other constants. In this way we get the red marked integral which has to be solved. In fact, this integral cannot be solved so easily in a conventional way. However, a look into the formula collection of mathematics provides the result. Pi to the power of 4 divided by 15. We can combine this constant value with the other constants and finally obtain the given formula for the radiated intensity of a black body at a given temperature. Since the term marked in red consists only of constant quantities, we can define this term as a new constant. This constant is called Stefan Boltzmann constant, not to be confused with the Boltzmann constant. So the radiated intensity of a black body depends only on the temperature. The intensity increases with the fourth power of the temperature. This law is also called the Stefan Boltzmann law.
The intensity can now be used to determine the radiant power of a blackbody, also called radiant flux, this means the emitted radiant energy per unit time. For this, the intensity as a surface power density just has to be multiplied by the surface area of the blackbody. Real bodies, the emissivity. In practice, real objects do not radiate with the intensity of a blackbody, but have a lower radiant power. This fact is taken into account by a unitless quantity called emissivity. The emissivity represents the radiant power of a real body compared to an ideal black body. For non-metallic surfaces, the emissivity is in many cases above 0.9. These objects can thus be considered as black bodies in a good approximation with respect to the emitted radiation. This makes it relatively easy to determine the temperature of real objects with the help of a thermal imaging camera or a pyrometer, since surface properties have a rather minor influence unless the surfaces are extremely reflective. Wien's displacement law. The spectral distribution as a function of temperature is now to be examined more closely. It turns out that the maximum of the curve shifts with increasing temperature to ever shorter wavelengths. The dependence of this wavelength lambda max on the temperature is given by the following equation. This equation is also known as Wien's displacement law. The Wien's displacement law can be obtained by determining the maximum of Planck's law for a given temperature. For this purpose, the Planck's function must be derived with respect to the wavelength. By using the product rule and setting the derivative equal to zero, one gets the following equation. We do not want to spend too much time on the mathematics in the following, and will therefore deal with the derivation quite quickly. You are welcome to pause the video and follow the individual steps yourself. At this point we can now factor out the exponential term. This equation will only be zero if the term marked in red becomes zero. To solve this equation for we first define a new variable x. The equation obtained with the help of this substitution can only be solved numerically, for example with Newton's method. The solution of this method gives x equals 4.9651. With this solution the wavelength lambda max can now be determined. For this purpose, the definition of the variable x must only be solved for the wavelength. This eventually leads to Wien's displacement law. The maximum of the spectral intensity can also be determined for the frequency form. For this, the function must be derived with respect to the frequency, and then set the derivative equal to zero. Thus, the following equation applies for the frequency at which the spectral intensity becomes maximum at a given temperature. Example In the following example we consider the wavelength spectrum of the radiation of a blackbody at a temperature of 2000 Kelvin. The diagram shows the wavelength form of Planck's law. We want to determine the wavelength lambda max at which the spectral intensity has its maximum. To do this, we use Wien's displacement law and put in the temperature of 2000 Kelvin. We obtain a wavelength lambda max of 1.44 micrometers. Now we consider the same radiation, but in the frequency spectrum. The diagram shows the frequency form of Planck's law. We now want to determine the frequency f max at which the spectral intensity has its maximum. For this purpose, we use the formula for the calculation of f max as shown earlier. We obtain a frequency f max of 118 terahertz. One could think that one could calculate this frequency f max directly from the wavelength lambda max with the help of the given relationship between frequency, wavelength and propagation of speed, which in this case is the speed of light. However, if you use this formula, you get a frequency of 208 terahertz. However, this calculated frequency obviously does not correspond to the frequency f max. The relationship between frequency, wavelength and propagation of speed obviously does not apply to lambda max and f max. Why is this so? At this point, it must be made clear that the spectral intensities plotted are different quantities in each case. In the wavelength form, the spectral intensity corresponds to the radiated intensity per unit wavelength while in the frequency form, the spectral intensity indicates the radiated intensity per unit frequency. Thus, both spectral intensities must not be compared or even equated without further ado.
Furthermore, the maximum of the spectral intensity must not be equated with the maximum of the absolute intensity or with the maximum of the radiant power. This has to do with the fact that the spectral intensity is a quantity related to the wavelength or frequency. One measures, so to speak, the radiant power in a certain wavelength interval or frequency interval and relates the radiant power to these intervals. A comparison of different radiant powers is therefore only possible if the same wavelength intervals are considered. However, since the frequency is not proportional to the wavelength, but reciprocally proportional, equidistant wavelength intervals do not also mean equidistant frequency intervals. Wavelength spectra and frequency spectra can therefore not be compared with each other by the usual relationships. To illustrate this, equidistant wavelength intervals of delta lambda equal to 0.25 micrometers are shown in the diagram. The wavelengths themselves can be converted by the given relationship into frequencies. However, we now no longer get equidistant frequency intervals. Thus, a valid comparison between the wavelength intervals and the frequency intervals is not given, and the spectral intensities as interval-related quantities cannot be converted in the usual way. Therefore a different frequency f max than one could expect from the formula f equals c divided by lambda is obtained when using the frequency form of the spectral intensity. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.